you, my fairy family, have been sending in these amazing questions. Some of them questions that I think so many people in the audience also share with you. And because I can't get to all the questions in a deep, adequate way on YouTube, I take time every week, sometimes more, to answer your questions on this, which I call Ask the Fairy. So today I have some questions that are about strong feelings that are really hard to control. Okay, I think a lot of people with complex PTSD know the feeling. And the first one I'm going to read to you is from somebody who I'm going to call Molly. Hello, Anna. I love all the videos that I've seen of you on YouTube. Thank you. Thank you for your great work and compassion. Uh, question. How can I stop the immediate feeling of rejection and humiliation when my partner criticizes me or strongly disagrees with me? Can you relate? Okay, I told you. It could be the most minor comment, but upon hearing it, my body reacts. I feel angry and like my true worthlessness has been discovered. And I immediately shut down verbally and physically. I can't even pull myself together to say, I need a minute. Let's pick this up later. I'm derailed for hours or days, unable to make eye contact or speak. Any closeness we have goes out the window. A feeling of hatred for everything and everyone takes over. Intimacy for me is almost impossible anyway, due to my CPTSD. Sometimes I plan right then and there to break up and move out. I'm single now, avoiding relationships for the past 20 years. That part of the letter came as a surprise after all this, but yeah, 20 years due to this issue. Thank you for any insight you can provide with love and gratitude, Molly. All right, thank you so much for this. And um, 20 years, I'm so sorry that you got held back from having a relationship because it sounds like that's what you really want from this behavior. And I totally get it. And I think a majority of people on this channel understand exactly what you're talking about. So first, it sounds like the reaction that you're having is a particular kind of CPTSD reaction known as abandonment melange. That is something that was defined by Pete Walker. It's an intense combination of panic, rage, and grief that only people with abandonment stuff could possibly even relate to. It's a very strong, overpowering feeling. It hijacks your nervous system and your reality. The telltale sign for me was when you said you feel like you hate everything and everybody and that you have to pack up and leave like right then. Aha. I recognize that feeling and it's very intense and it's a terrible experience for people to be around because it's not real. It's not really happening. It's a nervous system reaction based on past trauma. And I know what to do about that feeling to stop it from doing any more damage. The overreaction that you have when you're criticized is, you know, you already know it's, it's CPTSD talking. So everything depends on trying to create a little pause when you get criticized so that you have the opportunity to turn it around. You're, you have already demonstrated to yourself that everything you know, all the good work you've ever done, you're not able to just turn it around in the moment. So you need to create a pause. So this is the practical workaround. You come up with a few things you can say to other people when this feeling comes up around criticism or anything else. You come up with a few things you can say so that you don't have to explain to them what's going on. They don't need to know because, you know, when somebody, we're being irrational when we do this, right? So when somebody's being irrational, it doesn't matter what their reasons are. What matters is that we protect other people from the overreaction and we protect our relationship in the way that we value it from our overreaction. So we're just treating it as if there's this, um, it's like an allergy, okay? You have an allergy to criticism. I know that you know intellectually that it's not a big deal to be criticized, not normally, not usually. And I know that you have seen on TV appropriate ways to respond. So all this is, is about getting from the reaction that you have through a period where you don't do any damage to the point where you can act appropriately. And the way to act appropriately to criticism is to say, usually something like this. Wow, I didn't know you felt that way. I'm going to need to think about that. Okay. Could you do that even when you're overreacting? Say, wow, that's a, that's a lot of information. I didn't know you felt that. You don't have to say you don't even know they felt that way. The key thing to say is, I need to think about that. And then right then and there, you can say, if you need to, just say, would it be okay I want to take some time, just some time to go think about that. I take seriously what you said and I want to think about it. And uh, how about if we get back together in 
10 minutes, half an hour, two days, whatever it is that would be appropriate for the situation and for the intensity of how you're feeling, what you would expect you would need to work that, to, to think that over. And refrain from any effort to defend yourself, to criticize the fact that they're saying it. You can do that later, right? You can defend yourself and and rebut the, the accusation later. If it's really important, you can do it tomorrow. But tomorrow, you're gonna to be in a different frame of mind. You get a leave, you, you take your leave to go do this. And if people love you and care about you, you can even tell them sometime when you're not in the middle of this, sometimes I need to take leave of conversation so that I can process stuff. Sometimes things are hard for me to hear and I need a little time to work it out. When this happens, would it be okay with you if I take some time? I know it'll be inconvenient. I know that, I know that uh, you know, it might not always be what you plan, but I wanna make sure that I don't lash out at you as I have before. You're so important to me. So this is how you take full responsibility. You demonstrate that you care about other people and you make space to work out rationally what's happening with the criticism. Now, I know from experience when CPTSD causes me to react to criticism, what it sounds like, what it, to me, to my ears is, you are worthless. I don't want you in my life. That's what it sounds like. Those are my CPTSD ears hearing it. So if somebody were saying that, I should fight back. I'm not worthless. Fine. You want me out of your life? I'll leave. That's how those things come out of our mouths, right? Because we're hearing it wrong. We're reacting as if that's what was said but we've got to get it through our heads that we're not the fastest processors of what was said when we feel threatened, okay? We're just not that super fast at it. Once you've taken your leave, then what you do is you go to a place by yourself with your paper and a writing implement, pen or pencil, and you begin to write your fears and resentments. If you don't know how to do that, everybody who's watching, there's always a link below the video. It's called The Daily Practice. It's a free course. You can learn and try it in 40 minutes. And what it is, is it's a way to get your troubling thoughts out of here and onto paper so that you have room to think and reason and, and evaluate like what's really going on. How do I really feel about this? Not what's my CPTSD reaction. And you can bring yourself back from the brink, from those dysregulated thoughts. Cause that's what you're talking about here where, where Molly, where you, um, you can't, you find that you can't come back for it for several days, you can't make eye contact or speak, that's dysregulation, okay? That's exactly what it's like. And you're not yourself, your brain's not working, and it would be good to think of it as parallel to like, if you were really drunk, you would not try to have a heavy conversation and solve a problem with somebody because it's just, you know, part of you is not there to be rational and helpful with the situation and could end up doing some damage. So we didn't drink, we didn't do this on purpose. It's not really parallel to that. It's a brain injury that we have and it's not our fault that we got injured and it's not our fault that these reactions got started. They came from something we couldn't control. But here we are, here we are, hoping to have relationships with people with this very unfortunate like lashing out behavior that comes out or a, or a total like collapsing, I call it collapsing where you get criticized and it's just like, oh, I give up, I'm gonna leave, I'm, I'm really, really terrible. So often collapsing is followed by lashing out and then totally zoning out. None of this is helpful. This is exactly how we push away good people. And also through that whole cycle of being too intense and then getting all numbed out and dumbed down, we walk into situations and end up bonding with people we have no business being with. So we want our best minds completely working uh, during these crucial conversations. So, so when the feeling starts, you back out of it, you get your paper and pen and you write your fears and resentments. And if you're watching this, I just really encourage you, take the course, learn the specific technique. And if you really like doing this, follow it with meditation, calm your mind, do a restful meditation. I teach the instructions in that free course and you can learn how I do it. I wouldn't just freelance this and expect the same results that, that I teach and get here. But, um, you can use this to discharge the intense feelings and get them out. The third thing that you can do after writing and meditating is if you have a buddy who also does this, which you can find if you're in some of my groups, some of my course groups and membership, you can find a buddy, you can read to them 
And then together they can kind of help you go, oh yeah, I know that feeling. It sounds like you got really dysregulated and together they can help you sort of come back to square one and think through how you want to proceed. And in a lot of cases, when there's been an overreaction, you, well, sometimes you're going to realize, I, I don't even want to be with this person. I'm, I'm having this overreaction because actually I can't stand them. That's okay. If that's your reaction, you can proceed accordingly with your wits about you. Or you think, no, I love this person. <laughs> I don't want to treat them this way. I'm so glad I stepped back from this. And then you can formulate your response to it. Now, in a lot of cases, it's going to be an apology. And um, I'll, put a, I'll put a link below um, with the, when I put all the links in the description section. I'll put something in there about how to make a good apology. And one of the things I emphasize is even if something they said that was critical is what triggered you in the first place, a good apology isn't about what they said. It's just about what you did. And you can, you'll find that people's hearts are so much more open to you and your apology. You have so much more room and you're so much more likely to be forgiven if you did lash out, if you can just apologize focusing on your part in it, not bring them into it. I know you got triggered. You know you got triggered. You know they did something. We both understand we wish that other people were different, but a good apology doesn't involve what their, what their role is. You can talk about their role in it another time. Like if this is an ongoing close friendship or a partnership, marriage, yes, of course you want to talk about that and say, you know, when you do this, I get really triggered and it's hard. It's really hard for me to deal with it and to, to keep, you know, to not sort of, you know, go off on you on that. And I, I'll deal with that. I'll take responsibility for that. I'll take my leave and go right and bring myself back so that we can have a good talk about it. But do you think you could not say that thing? <laughs> it's okay to ask that. It's okay to ask that. But as we all know, not sometimes they can't do what we ask. Sometimes they don't want to. They just are like, no, that's not reasonable. Um, I've had stuff like, you know, I, the, I've had people like ask if I would control my speech and use strange words for things instead of words that they didn't like. And I'm just like, no, <laughs> no. But for the most part, if I can reasonably accommodate somebody and not trigger them, of course I want to do that. So I want to talk a little bit about what, what is the problem with criticism and why is it so tough? And I'll tell you my understanding of it is that until you've been doing this for a good long time, you have a lot of self-attacking thoughts in there anyway. And by self-attacking thoughts, I mean um, resentment at yourself. We have a lot of resentment at other people. We have a lot of resentment at ourselves. And anything like shame or guilt is resentment itself. And so what that is, is you have such a stack piled up, just like a giant, like, garbage heap of self-attacking thoughts, you know, of like, um, I'm resentful at myself because I have fear that uh, no one loves me, fear I'm unlovable, fear there's something wrong with me, fear I'm broken, fear I always lash out, fear I'm ugly, fear I'm fat, fear I'm old, fear I'm not pretty enough, fear uh, I'm not the type, and fear I am stupid, and fear I don't have enough money, and fear when I do, nothing I buy will make me any better, and fear, look at all the evidence, fear when I was in second grade, all the kids had lunch and they wouldn't let me sit at their table, and you know, this stuff like piles up from a lifetime. And the more it's piled up, the more it's like, it's like sitting there about to blow all the time, and we're using little tricks of checking out and being in denial to not go there and not get overwhelmed by it just so that we can function. But if somebody goes in there and says, and says, you know, I'm really sick and tired of the way that you talk about that vacation we had with other people. <sighs> and it becomes a knife to the heart that, that people are saying something that's bothering them, that actually people in friendships and relationships need to be able to express what's bothering them. And if a person can't take it, if a person is gonna freak out and explode every time they say something, you know what they do? Well, you've been in this, these shoes too, I bet. You get afraid to say a word. You don't want to say anything because you can't deal with the repercussions of setting this person off at an unreasonable level of explosion. So what happens to a relationship when people can't express themselves and can't say something's bothering them? There is no communication. People start coping with things by shutting down, right? 
they find workarounds in that they just don't talk about things and that's not going to give you the love and intimacy that you actually want. So the job here is to be able to show up to talk about what's bothering people, to choose people who are able to do it without being abusive. That's a given. I'm not saying you should put up with abuse. Um, but if you do find some, find yourself in a situation when you're thinking, I'm not sure if I'm getting abused here, and that happens a lot to people with CPTSD, if you are in that situation, you again can take your leave and write about it, maybe read it to a buddy who also does this, get a little feedback so that you're a little bit clearer going into it. This is abuse. This is not abuse. You need to know that because if you go in accusing somebody of abuse unreasonably, they're probably not going to be in your life for long. Okay. And if you talk yourself into accepting abuse, you're not going to have a good life. So it's, it's incredibly important and it's your happiness depends very much on you having that discernment on, is it just me or do I, you know, is, is somebody being unfair to me right now with this criticism? So that's what we do. We take our pause, we discharge the intense feelings and thoughts on paper. We ask for them to be removed. We go talk to a friend if we can. There's not always the opportunity to talk to a person. So, uh, you know, you sit in the car and I've done this, you know, like I sit in the car, I'm driving in the car with my husband. He says something, it really sets me off. And I go, hmm. and I start writing and he knows me now. He knows if I'm sitting there writing, he maybe, he should probably let me keep writing until I'm done. And he doesn't, he doesn't interrupt that or be like, what are you writing? He knows, <laughs> right? And he's glad, he's grateful that I, I don't just like, Bleh. you know, I put it on paper. I take it out. And when I'm done, sometimes I'll meditate if, if it's that time of day. And then I can come and say, okay, so the thing that you said, what bothered me about that was, and I can say what it was, and we could actually have a conversation about it. And that's how, that's how close relationships are forged is through those kind of conversations. Half the time, actually, when I'm done, I just don't, there's nothing that even needs to be said. And he knows well enough. If I'm not going to bring it up, he's not going to bring it up. We're okay. The last thing we want to do is fight. The second to the last thing we want to do is sweep things under the rug. So that's the, the happy medium there is to, is to just try to have conversations where we're calm and we're being reasonable and we, we're pretty clear about what bothers us. And it's not, because what, what happens, okay, so you get criticized, right? You get criticized and all this old thing, the lunch table from second grade gets in there and you're like, you didn't have lunch with me. And, you know, uh, can't you see that made me feel like completely left out and unloved and uncared for? Well, they can't see that. They just had to cancel lunch. What you're reacting to is some old thing about that. And that's why we write, we write to give a chance. You know, it doesn't matter if you surface the precise memory. Everything doesn't depend on being precise and targeted about exactly what happened. You may, you may discover that, but if you don't, that's okay. It's more that just getting your hand to the paper and even the friction of the, of this, once you've done it for a while, that friction of pen to paper, I like pencils because they have more friction. It's I've trained my brain. It's like, I'm just letting it out right now. I'm letting it out right now, all the intensity. And then I rest and then I come back and I just, you know, I can think straight. And I can say things in a way that I feel good about and I stand by and not, I don't lash out and an hour later go, oh my God, what have I done? You know, that's not anything I ever want to go back to in my life. It ruins everything, ruins my day uh, and it ruins relationships. So one great thing about avoiding arguments or getting into a big conflict about a criticism that you heard is that the it's the conflict itself that follows that when you try to express yourself while you're dysregulated will take your dysregulation that's this big and make it like this big or this big and then for three days you can't work or think or anything and you're eating stuff and whatever you're doing you're way off your rails with it that's how that's how CPTSD wrecks our lives. So we can't ever not have CPTSD. We're always going to have triggers, but they're going to get calmer the more practice you have at quietly kind of backing yourself out of that bad place and being able to express yourself and having people who love you stay in your life. That definitely helps. I hope that helps you, Molly. It's been 20 years. It's going to be baby steps, but I am really rooting for you to come back out of that. It's like you remind me of a, a little a little kitten like up a tree, just like I can't come down till it's safe. And with, with this and this, you have some safety and you can come down. There's a way that you can deal with that bad thing that comes, that comes and happens and you can stick it out 
and good things can follow. So I hope you're able to use this and start making some friends and who knows, maybe even meet somebody if that's your heart's desire. So that's it for Ask the Fairy. Thank you for being here. If you have a question you want me to answer here on YouTube, send it in to me at hello at crappychildhoodfairy.com and put in the subject line, Ask the Fairy. And I will have a look at it. And if it's short enough and not too intense, remember, I don't want to get you thrown under the bus, judged or criticized by all the YouTube commenters. Don't do that, you guys. Send me, send me a nice size chunk question that is answerable on YouTube. And I would be happy to do that for you on this show. If you like this topic, I'm going to suggest you have a look at this video right here. I talk more about it there. I will see you very soon. <laughs>